So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curva.com and today we have a really, really special guest. His name is Colin Taylor, he's an analyst at Enbridge and uh, you've met, or at least some of you have met him before. We tried to do a live streaming session for a few weeks ago and we ran a, oh, we had tons of technical difficulties. So unfortunately, it was not so easy to follow along when he was explaining his super cool trick. So we actually team up again. So we are doing a proper recording this time. So we make sure that the quality is high and you can actually follow along his trick. So thank you very much, Colin, for joining us again, for having the patience to do this two times. And uh, back to you. So show us your cool trick. Well, hello again, everybody, and hopefully the audio problems have cleared away this time, and there should be that horrible feedback that gets in everybody's ears 30 seconds after I started talking. Uh, thanks again, Ruth, as well, for having me back to uh, to another re-record of this session where we were doing some header management tricks that I've been using for, well, quite a while. Anytime I'm dealing with large data sets, wide data sets, and I want to present something to clients or other user groups that's a little bit more readable, I often like to move columns around so that they're ordered the way that they should be and sometimes rename them too. And it's nice to be able to control that in a mass way rather than double clicking on columns or dragging and moving columns around, which is okay if you only have a few columns. But when you have more, there's certain trick that I'll be showing you. I find quite handy. And again, I almost use it on every workbook that I work on, uh, whether it's an Excel Power Query or Power BI and structuring the data, just so that at the end user level, it's uh, looking the way it should. Oh, first thing I'll start off with, I'm actually going to do this from scratch while we're on this. So I'm going to start off with from scratch in a very simple Northwinds data set, uh, just one of the orders view of the Northwinds data set that Ruth likes to demo on quite a lot. And I figured I'd just keep going with that theme. So this orders data set, it's fairly tall and fairly wide. We end up with, uh, let me see if I can do it, 18 columns, which isn't a huge count, but it's big enough where it might be painful to double click and rename, drag and move columns around. So we'll do some of the work with on these. And well, let's get started. So first thing I like to point out whenever I'm working in queries, whether it's in Power Query or Power BI, is I like to structure my queries and start making use of groupings that we can put them into. So you can do that by moving groups, creating new groups. It just makes for large queries and complicated queries, makes it a little bit easier to follow along or even for yourself a month or two later when somebody asks you because something broke, how you can follow your logic. So we're going to start off with the orders. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's just get the order headers. So I'm just going to reference this right away, orders to. And up at the top, I'm going to do uh, table.column names. And remember the camel casing, because every word in Microsoft for M seems to be camel cased, capitals, Ns, and Cs, and Ts. And what table.column names does is it produces just a simple list of those column names. Now I'm doing this demo in Excel. Uh, the demo will also work within Power Query, sorry, Power BI, uh, but how you control, uh, store the control tables is a little bit different. But for now, because I'm in Excel, I'm actually just gonna copy this entire list. So copy the entity list, or I can just close and load which isn't a bad way to do it either. And it spits out that list into Excel for me. So I'm just going to copy that and put it into another tab because I don't want that query around all the time. I just wanted it to give me a really quick list of, um, of values. So what we ended up with here is a list of all of the columns that are how they're spelled and in the order top to bottom and left to right that they exist in the query. And this is where we may edit around this a little bit. All right, sheet four is the one I want to keep. Oh, Q 
keep sheet four. And sheet five, I don't need anymore. So the only reason I did the column names is to start off with a list, a control table. I'll disable that load. And this control table, within Excel and table design, you can name it. Naming it in Excel means it's, uh, it's memory referenceable within whether it's VBA or Power Query. So it's a really handy way to have your data and name it too. So where are we going to have this header management? So call this one header management and we'll have one here for original column names. So we've got original names. Now I'm going to break this down and do the simple one first. And that's just the reordering. So we have columns that are appearing in a certain order left to right or top to bottom according to our list. And we'd like them to show up in a different way so that the right things are grouped together. And if we do it in Power Query, I'll just show you really quickly what that looks like. I'm certain all of you have done this too. You've dragged columns around. This is nothing new. But just by dragging and moving certain columns around, what you'll see at the top is you have table.reorder columns. So that's all the call is. And what it's producing as arguments is what the previous table is that it's working off of. And then it gives a complete list. And you'll see it's a list. And you, how do I know it's a list? Curly brackets. Curly brackets are your friends in Power Query and Power BI. Because anytime you see curly brackets, things within that is a list. So even though they're written with commas and separations, what you can visualize them as, and I'll have to close that down, what you can visualize them as is just a top-down list where every item is another row. Well, that's exactly what we have here is we have a list. And when you're reordering the columns, the order from left to right or top to bottom that that list exists is how it'll re render them, which is rather nice. And there's another call, too, that we can get to that'll do very much the same thing, and that's table.select columns. So we've got one table, and we have the columns. I could just grab a few and move them up. Now well, that's not exciting. I'd like a little bit more control over it, so orders. So I'll add another column in this table, and we'll call it column orders. And we can be really boring and just say these are all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we'll include that within the queries. Or I can get a little bit more imaginative. And from this point down, 7, 6, 5. And that'll probably end up being negative at some point. So these will all get jumbled together. Now, they're still stored in their original order. And I'm not even going to move this table around. But we'll use this in the next view. So once you've got your control table ready for Excel, it's just easier to control the control table. Oh, in Excel, control the control table. Oh, that's smart. And then pull it back in. So for Power Query, hit the tab, and you, anywhere within the table, pull the data in from the table. And we now have it here. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it into the right group. It's not my raw connection. It's going to be header management. So we can see there it's moved into header management. Orders 2, don't need that anymore. Just clear it out of there. Do some junk. So we have our header management table here. Now our goal is to turn this table into a list that looks like, and we'll just move this around, that can replace this part of the argument. And I'll show you how to do that. So table dot reorder columns. And then we end up with the list that we want. So I always like to, anytime I connect to a data set or a raw data set, I like to keep it around and not mess around with it too much or just do some simple cleaning. And then other things after that get referenced to it. So this one here is actually going to be, I'll rename that shortly. But let's do our ordering operation now. So I'm going to sort ascending so that all of these columns are now sort of ascending. And now I'm going to do the really simple trick 
is I'm just going to select the column I want and hit drill down. What does drill down do? It builds a list. And that list, top to bottom, is what I now want to hand off. So let's say this is header orders. So we've now got header orders there. I'll come back up here and reference the original orders and just drag it down to the bottom for now. So what was that call we did before? That was table. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. You know what happens if I can't remember what it was called? I get lazy. And I just do something on there that does what I know it does what I want it to do. And comma close and curly brackets. Actually, no, I don't even need the curly brackets because we've created the list already. So our table reorder columns, we're handing it the source. In this case, it's the table uh, that we're working on. And I'm just going to pass it along header orders. And that uh, value of the table wasn't found. What do you mean value wasn't found? Please edit this out. Uh, <laughs> I know what I did wrong. I know exactly what I did wrong. Back here in the control table, I included the first row that came out of my previous query as values, and that's actually the header. So I don't need it. I'm going to delete it. Now that it's deleted, it should work perfectly fine. This sometimes happens. So it was looking for a column called values, and there was no column called values, and now it's working. So you see what I did there, I actually bounced back into the Excel workbook, just removed that row and said, ah, don't worry about it, and it updated the query. So the query downstream here now, we're actually using the header orders to order the headers. And I removed the header that didn't exist, and it sets itself up just fine. So that's one way to control the order of your headers. Well, there's a step more that we can do to control not only the order of the headers, but the visibility, because sometimes you don't want all of them showing up there. And it's almost the exact same call. It, well, it's the same arguments, but the call itself, instead of reorder columns, is select columns. And select columns does the same thing. I just hit enter. You notice no changes. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that error because that had nothing to do with what I just did. So it does the exact same thing with one exception. If I was to remove columns now from here and just say, you know what, don't include these top three. Well, What's a better way for me to not include them? I could just delete them from the list, or I could leave them in there and have a control. So I'll add one that's called visibility, put ones in, and some zeros in. And I'm going to treat ones as keep them visible. And just keep showing them around. So come back into Power Query. Go back into my header management here, and you can see there's visibility. So in my header orders, I'm going to back up one step where I still had my visibility. Turn that on so that just the ones I want to keep are around there. And now we've got a shorter list of my original names. And I can bounce into orders here, and I'll probably have to refresh the, uh, the query here. And we'll see that we only have the columns that were selected. So we have order, employee, customer, order, and customer ID. And we have order details, employee, customer, order, and ending with uh, required date and ship date. And scroll over this way, ending with required date and ship date. So now in one simple table, we can control, I'll just close that and keep it. We can control not only what is Away. We can control not only the order that they appear in left to right, also their visibility. And I figure that's a pretty good place to end on. There is a more advanced trick that uh, 
probably continue recording anyways and see if we can move that put that into the same episode with Ruth. I'm usually a lot more entertaining, guys. I'm pretty stressed out. Maybe I'll just re-record the audio and try to throw some jokes in there. Um, <laughs> I heard Ruth laugh once. That's how I know I did poorly. Anyways... I could continue moving on. There is another more advanced one where we can not only control what we've just done, its ordering, its visibility, but also renaming conventions. So you want to call order ID something else. You want to call a customer guy who pays me. You want to do anything else. Um, but I think I'll save that for another video. So first of all, thank you, Colin, for taking the time again of doing this and sharing your knowledge with all of us. I really appreciate it. It was a great, great trick. Um, as usual, if you like the video, just uh, let us know, me and Colin, uh, by liking it or sharing it. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, comment box as usual and uh, subscribe i publish power bi videos every monday wednesday and friday so have a great great day bye